Right, so welcome back. Uh, part two of this chair renovation. Um, as I said in, in part one, I've, I've primed it um, for the reasons of staining and of nicotine and the smell of nicotine. Um, generally, as I said with the Sarah Jane chalk paints, you don't need to um, prime anything, but there are occasional times, um, and in particular when, when there's smoke or dark, dark wood, that's when you will need to prime. Um, anyway, so what I'm going to do now, as you can see, it's all white, all primed. Um, just sort of slapped on there, really, you know. Um, I, I got as, as good a coverage as I could. Uh, and mainly it's because it's a, a, an interwoven pattern. And it's full of nooks and crannies and what have you. So I kind of had to work on that a bit harder than I would just a normal flat piece of wood furniture. Uh, whereas I'd have just been splashing it on a bit like, um, I don't know if you can see it, but a bit like this part here is made of wood and I've just sort of quickly gone over it but with this back area I've gone over it a little bit harder. Um, sorry, there's a little brush here there, that's my fault, it's using an old brush. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is, I, I, I've decided on my colours, um, if I just run through them with you, um, I'm going to use a Sarah Jane uh, paint called Sophia. And I'm going to use that for the main bulk. I was going to use an ivory white, but I've decided against that because this is going to be a very, um, for want of a better thing to say, a very girly piece of furniture and I can quite see it in a... Uh, either a young uh, girl's bedroom or uh, a, a, a mother or wife um, who's really going to be quite taken with this, I think. Um, the chair in itself, I mean, it has that compartment. It's going to have the lovely picture of the girl on it that I, I've drawn. Um, and I'm going to make it nice and pink now. But this is a very light pink, so it's not detracting from the lightness of colour that I was going to have round here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this colour which is Duchess and that's a, a bit of a darker pink. Um, if I can just demonstrate them I hope you can see them in the camera. One's very light and one's got a darker tinge to it and I'm going to use the darker tinge for the braiding round here. And that girl runs all the way around here and all the way around here. So it's going to be quite a nice dark frame. I mean, that's generally how I'd, I'd frame my pictures anyway. If I put a double mount around a pastel, I'd have an ivory outer generally and a darker inner, which is suitable for the picture colour. So I'm trying to sort of emulate that within a piece of furniture as well. Um, the legs as such, I'm not actually sure what colour I'm going to do them yet. They will probably end up the lighter pink, but I can't say for certain at the moment. Um, so I've kind of left them at the moment. They will detach, and once I've detached them, um, I'll paint them off, off of the piece of furniture, because what I want to do is to keep some of this original gold underneath here and inside here, just to show where it came from and, and how it was, um, and a bit of the originality of the actual chair. There are some metal pieces on the end here. I've actually taken them off previously. I hope you can see them. And I shone them up. Now, you know, they're lovely like that, but they're not really going to suit a pink pattern or, or the picture that I'm going to put on it. So what I'm doing is I'm picking out another um, colour from the painting that I've done, and there's a grey path. So uh, I'm going to have a dark pink there, a light pink there, and then for the metal, I'm going to just lightly abrade them and I'm going to use some hammerite spray on them so that'll be a lovely smooth spray and it's going to be a grey, uh, sorry, no, well, yes, a grey, but a silver grey. Um, I just think against this and against that, it's all going to match and all be really suitable. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to show you um, a few of the brushes that you could use. These are also available from um, Sarah Jane Chalk Paints. And um, I get my brushes originally from Claire's Craft House. Um, so, the, you know, they're available from outlets. Um, Claire's Craft House is a, a great place to go. And Claire herself is absolutely brilliant on giving advice. Um, obviously, I don't 
go to her too much but when I have a question which was in the early days she was really really helpful I have to say and just simple things have made this a lot better and a lot more pleasurable for me. Now some of the brushes that I've got that Sarah Jane sent over to me um, I've got this large round brush I haven't used that as yet um, but that's really lovely and soft it's a bit like a shaving brush um, as you can see I've had a shave today the haircut's still to come I'm still looking a bit like a yeti but we'll get there hopefully for the next video anyway um, this is lovely lovely and soft and for big areas I suppose I could probably use it on this chair but at the moment I'm sticking to the smaller version of that and the reason I'm going to use the round brush on this particular project is because of all this wicker and nooks and crannies. Um, now them brushes are, are, are ideal for getting into places that you can't normally get in due to the, the roundness of the, um, the brush tip. Now there are these flat ones as well. Um, as you can see they're, they're, they're made of the same bristles I believe. Um, as you can see they're still in the packets. Um, that's the one I use for priming. But uh, they're ideal for large areas, f flat areas. Um, yeah, I mean, whatever you choose, they're all good. I started off with just this one inch brush. I, that's actually the one I use for priming. I started off with just this one inch brush and I was doing tables and all sorts with it. Having said that, Sarah Jane kindly gave me these. Um, and uh, yeah. I don't know how I lived without them now, if I'm being perfectly honest. Uh, another thing you can use to apply is a sponge um, sponge brush. I think that's what they call them, I'm not really sure. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is just apply some of the paint just to show you how easy this is. Now, like I said originally, um, if this had just been an ordinary clean chair, I wouldn't have had to prime it. So this technique, or this process rather, that I'm doing I would have just done straight on there. Um, the only reason I've primed it as I said is because it had nicotine staining and nicotine smell and uh, I had to get rid of it. So always stir the paint to begin with. Um, a lot of people turn the, the, the tin upside down. Um, if I'm being perfectly honest I forget to do that. Um, and whatever's in there obviously sinks to the bottom and, and mixes it as it goes but I stir it anyway every time I, I use it so and I've never had any problems so just like an ordinary paint stir it. If you want a smoother texture um, into a, a large tip, well actually I did it on one of these small pots as well, you can put a tablespoon of water um, and that will give you a smoother texture to, to run over. Now I'd probably do that in the later stages on, on the, on the um, definitely if I had to go to a third coat but uh, either a second or third coat. The first coat I just do as is straight up the tin. Um, but some people are not looking for that smoothness. They're looking to distress their um, furniture anyway so you know the roughness uh, Roughness, that's the wrong word to use, it's not rough, but the, 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 the chalkiness look of the paint and the, goes very well with what they do. So, what I've done, I've given that a quick stir. This small pot should be ample to do this chair. If not, you can get these in small pots, you can buy a replacement in a small pot, or you can buy the bigger tin. Um, if I have to buy another one, I'll go to the bigger tin. But here we go. So, simple as this. I hope you can see the change in colour. All I have to do is just come to the front here and literally, I'm just brushing backwards. Look how that's covering. That's amazing. Absolutely amazing. And that's a lovely colour, I have to say. Sierra Jane chalk paints have several colours. Um, I'm not really sure how many. Uh, if I got a chart here. No, I haven't got my chart available at the moment, but I'm thinking probably at least 20 colours. And they're all lovely pastel shades. I know that they have uh, a silver shade. Right, now I'm going right down to the um, braiding there. And it doesn't matter if I go over that. 
because I'm going to be covering it up again anyway with the darker pink. But look at this, this going on so, so easy and looking absolutely tremendous. Now, you can see that I'm taking a bit of time of this, literally just because of the, um, the texture of the chair. If it, wasn't, if it wasn't a textured chair as such, if it didn't have this wicker effect, I would literally um, not be taking this time. I'd be going a lot faster than this. And uh, you can see that it covers great. I mean, this is just the first coat. And it's not a thick coat either. Right. So with this one, I'm going along and then I'm going down. Just because there's grooves there. Like I say, on a normal uh, chair, you just have smooth platform anyway nothing to worry about but look at that isn't that tremendous I hope you can see the color of that on there but that's what I'm going to do I'm going to cover the whole chair I'm not going to bore you by um, w letting you watch me complete a whole chair but I have to say what, what I'm going to do is literally what I've done here now that will dry in about well touch dry in about 20 minutes um, now, I, I learnt from Sarah Jane Chalk Paints the other day, and little snippets of information are so, so handy. I learnt that the chalk paint, um, I believe she said, takes about three weeks to actually cure. So, you need to be careful about knocking it beforehand, because it will be a little bit soft. But once that's cured, that's on me. Um, and also, the varnishes and what have you, they take a few weeks to cure as well. So... I would generally put a second coat on after 20 minutes, 30 minutes possibly. And um, then another 30 minutes after that, if I was at that point, I'd be, I'd probably only need two coats for this by the look of it. I'd probably uh, then varnish it. And I'd know within four weeks, this would be sound, very sound. So I'm just going to carry on doing this. Um, Look at that. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Such a beautiful colour too. Yeah. And what I will be doing when I come to the braiding is I'll pretty much just be doing exactly the same as I'm doing now. Getting my colour. And I've got a little watercolour brush here. And I'll be using that to just pick round the colours. Uh, let me just quickly show you that. Just to show you how easy it is. I haven't stirred it, but I will do literally just do that look that's going on there so easy and by the time you put a second coat on everything is going to be completely covered isn't that wonderful look at that easy as that easy as that nothing could be easier none of the priming norm of normal None of the um, hassles that go with other types of paint. Uh, literally, I've got a nice watercolour brush here. I've got my round brush here, my chalk paint brush. Literally, I'll go indoors, wash it under the tap. They're completely clean for another day. And I can even leave that sitting there for 10, 20 minutes easily and still be able to get rid of the paint. Um, yeah, for the moment, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, switch off and leave you now. I'm going to carry on. What you will see at the end of this is literally my painted chair. By that point, I may have decided to have paint the legs and uh, hammer right these little leg pieces. So hopefully when you come back, we'll have a completely painted chair. Um, I may varnish it before that next video, so all that will leave me then is to show you how I will upholster it. But uh, I've got to say, this is this Sarah Jane chalk paint. I'm absolutely in love with it. I just can't stop using it. I keep thinking to myself, what would it be like to actually paint a picture with it? Maybe one day I might do that. You never know.
look at that, that's just curling on there. It's going to take me hardly any time at all to cover this. And like I say, I'm not going to bore you with the whole process because you uh, obviously have got the idea now. And uh, I should think my voice becomes a bit boring after a while. <laughs> anyway. Thanks very much for watching again. I'll get this covered and I'll see you next time. Bye.